Fake Namek in Dragon Ball Z is one of the most disliked portions of the series, one of the most disliked mini filler arcs, if you want to call it that, by a lot of the fandom, and with good reason. It kind of feels like a waste of time. They go on Fake Namek, they get the Dragon Balls, it turns out to be fake, then they hit the reset button and go to real Namek, and this arc is filler and was not in the original manga, but... There are certain aspects of fake Namek that I kind of find interesting, especially looking back on it now after so many years of watching this series time and time again. And on this video, I want to discuss that and give you a bit of a defense for fake Namek. I'm not saying that I like it, but I can tell you one thing. On my recent rewatch of Dragon Ball Z, I appreciate it more. And I'll tell you why next. <laughs> So most of you guys watching this kind of already know this, but there are some fans who have never seen Dragon Ball Z and only watched Dragon Ball Kai's version. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, the fake Namek was a very short filler arc in the Dragon Ball Z adaptation of the manga. It was not in the original manga. And if you want to go back and watch it, if you've never seen it before and only seen Kai, it is Dragon Ball Z episodes 40 to 44. Now, the criticisms of this arc are valid. I, I do agree that it is a waste of time, it was unnecessary, and the whole purpose behind this filler is that the anime was catching up to the manga, and they had to give Toriyama and Jump Magazine more time to put out more chapters before they jumped right into Frieza. At some point in the future, I'll probably do an in-depth discussion or an in-depth video on filler in Dragon Ball, and sort of how it worked, why it happened, just so people kind of understand what it actually is. But I digress. Fake Namek arc features Krillin, Gohan, and Bulma landing on a planet that they thought, they presumed, was Planet Namek. In fact, if you're watching the series for the very first time, and you've never read the manga, and you are going in ignorant of what happens, you would also think that it was the real Planet Namek. I know I did when I was a kid. And they meet these two Namekians named Raichi and Zakuro, who, as it turns out, were actually posing as being kind-hearted aliens and were, in fact, not that. They weren't even Namekians. We find out by the end of the little mini-arc that these two guys were masters of illusions and were tricking Gohan, Bulma, and Krillin into thinking they were going on this Dragon Ball hunt when, in fact, all they wanted was to steal their ship to get off the planet because they were stranded there. Yes, this is a waste of time. Dragon Ball fans have said it for 20 years or more. And yes, it does not further the plot. But one thing I did like about it, number one, I love Star Trek. And this whole mini arc felt like something out of Star Trek. There are so many Star Trek episodes where you have these aliens that seem like they're good guys, but they have sinister motives, both in classic series and Next Generation. They try to trick Picard and Captain Kirk and get on the ship. It just... It's a recurring sort of plot device that Star Trek uses. Seeing that in Dragon Ball was cool, but again, that's just me. The other thing I like about this arc is it does give Krillin and Gohan a little bit more time to use stuff like the Masenko and their techniques and kind of gives them their own little mini adventure. And that's always a pleasure. You know, I try to look at the positives when it comes to seeing the characters interacting together and kind of building up that friendship they would have for the rest of their lives. And the biggest reason as to why I'm defending this arc a little bit, again, I'm not a huge fan of it, but there are things I appreciate about it, is the fact that it feels like Dragon Ball. This arc sort of in a weird way kind of hits the reset button because it feels like the first arc of Dragon Ball, the Pilaf arc. We have this sort of adventure tone throughout the entire thing but this also this kind of grim and frightening kind of tone because you can tell something's not right but the architecture in these episodes the art design in these episodes I think is fantastic there's tons of creativity in the way they sort of design like the buildings the giant like there's so much cool stuff here that Toriyama did not give them the basis for and they should be credited for that writers Takao Koyama who was kind of the showrunner for Dragon Ball Z Aya Matsui and Keiji Terui, I think, tried their best to kind of go back to the original feel of the series. Although Goku was not there, you still had Bulma kind of being the connective tissue, Goku's son, and Krillin. It kind of reminded me of not just, you know, the first arc of Dragon Ball, but also that sort of mini 
arc or mini section of the Red Ribbon Army arc when they're in the Pirate's Cave. It really brought back those kind of vibes and Dragon Ball at this point was evolving past that. Even though Namek became this sort of struggle for the Dragon Balls and they go from Vegeta to Frieza to Gohan they keep getting traded around in the first half of the uh, Namek arc or the Frieza saga Toriyama was already evolving the series into being more focused on the quest for power that's what the entire Cell saga was from the time Trunks arrives to the very end it is a quest for power from both the good guys and Cell the bad guy that's where the series kind of went and the Dragon Balls were kind of put on the back burner they were not the central focus of a show called Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z or a manga called Dragon Ball. So I do appreciate the fact that this little mini arc has a lot of mystery to it and does bring back warm feelings of classic hunt for the Dragon Balls adventure type of story. And we wouldn't even get that until the first half of the Black Star Dragon Ball arc in Dragon Ball GT. And yes, I know that the Boo Saga had that one filler episode where the B characters were trying to get the Dragon Balls and it was all comedy and whatnot, but an actual hunt for the Dragon Balls that feels adventurous, we would not get that again for years until GT. So because of that, I have to say that even though I'm not a fan of fake Namek, it's not that bad, number one. It really isn't. And number two, I appreciate what it tried to do, although the execution probably could have been a bit better. With that being said, the video is done. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the fake Namek arc, and I'll see you in the next one.